Leonardo DiCaprio Leonardo Wilhelm DiCaprio is an American actor and film producer. Known for his work as a leading man in biopics and period films, he is the recipient of numerous accolades, including an Academy Award, a British Academy Film Award, and three Golden Globe Awards. As of 2019, his films have grossed over $7.2 billion worldwide, and he has been placed eight times in annual rankings of the world's highest paid actors. Born in Los Angeles, DiCaprio began his career in the late 1980s by appearing in television commercials. In the early 1990s, he had recurring roles in various television shows, such as the sitcom Parenthood, and had his first major film part as author Tobias Wolf in This Boy's Life, 1993. At age 19, he received critical acclaim and his first Academy Award and Golden Globe Award nominations for his performance as a developmentally disabled boy in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, 1993. He achieved international stardom with the star-crossed romances Romeo plus Juliet, 1996, and Titanic, 1997. After the latter became the highest-grossing film at the time, he reduced his workload for a few years. In an attempt to shed his image of a romantic hero, DiCaprio sought roles in other genres, including crime drama and Catch Me If You Can, 2002, and Gangs of New York, 2002. The latter marked the first of his many successful collaborations with director Martin Scorsese. DiCaprio portrayed Howard Hughes in The Aviator, 2004, and received acclaim for his performances in the political thriller Blood Diamond, 2006, the crime drama The Departed, 2006, and the romantic drama Revolutionary Road, 2008. In the following decade, DiCaprio starred in several high-profile director's projects, including the action thriller Inception, 2010. The Western Django Unchained, 2012, the romantic drama The Great Gatsby, 2013, the biopic The Wolf of Wall Street, 2013, the survival drama The Revenant, 2015, for which he won an Academy Award and a BAFTA Award for Best Actor, and the comedy drama Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 2019, all of which were critical and commercial successes. DiCaprio is the founder of Appian Way Productions, a production company that has produced some of his films in the documentary series Greensburg, 2008-2010 and the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation, a non-profit organization devoted to promoting environmental awareness. He regularly supports charitable causes and has produced several documentaries on the environment. He currently serves as one of the United Nations Messengers of Peace. In 2005, he was named a Commander of the Order des Arts at De Lettres for his contributions to the arts, and in 2016, he appeared in Time magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. DiCaprio was voted one of the 50 greatest actors of all time in a 2022 Reader's Poll by Empire. Early Life and Acting Background Leonardo Wilhelm DiCaprio was born on November 11, 1974, in Los Angeles, California. He is the only child of Ermelin. Nayanden Birkin, a legal secretary, and George DiCaprio, an underground comics writer, publisher, and distributor of comic books, they met while attending college and moved to Los Angeles after graduating. His father is of Italian and German descent. His maternal grandfather, Wilhelm Inden Birkin, was German, and his maternal grandmother, Helene Inden Birkin, was a Russian immigrant living in Germany. DiCaprio was raised as a Catholic. Sources have falsely claimed his maternal grandmother was born in Odessa, Ukraine. There is no evidence that DiCaprio has any relatives of Ukrainian birth or heritage. DiCaprio's parents named him Leonardo because his pregnant mother first felt him kick while she was looking at a Leonardo da Vinci painting in the Uffizi Museum in Florence, Italy. When DiCaprio was one year old, his father moved out of their house after he fell in love with another woman. Because his parents wanted to raise him together, they moved into twin cottages with a shared garden in Echo Park, a neighborhood in Los Angeles. DiCaprio's father lived with his girlfriend and her son, Adam Farrar, with whom DiCaprio developed a close relationship as they grew up. DiCaprio and his mother later moved to other neighborhoods, such as Los Feliz, while she was employed in several jobs. He attended the Los Angeles Center for Enriched Studies for four years and later the Seeds Elementary School, before enrolling at the John Marshall High School. DiCaprio later said that he had hated public school and wanted to audition for acting jobs instead, so that he could improve his family's financial situation. He dropped out of high school following his third year, eventually earning a general equivalency diploma. 
DiCaprio has said his career choice as a child was to become a marine biologist or an actor but he eventually favored the latter, as he liked impersonating characters and imitating people, and seeing people's reaction to his acting. His interest in performing began at the age of two, when he went onto the stage at a performance festival and danced spontaneously, receiving a positive response from the crowd. He was also motivated to learn acting by his stepbrother's appearance in a television commercial, for which Farrar earned $50,000. DiCaprio has said in interviews that his first television appearance was in the children's series Romper Room, and that he was dismissed from the show for being disruptive. However, the show's host has denied that any children were removed from the show in this way. He began appearing in several commercials when he was 14 for Matchbox Cars by Mattel, which he cites as his first role. He later appeared in commercials for Kraft Singles, Bubble Yum, and Apple Jacks. In 1989, he played the role of Glenn in two episodes of the television show The New Lassie. At the beginning of his career, DiCaprio had difficulty finding an agent. When he found one, he suggested DiCaprio change his name to Lenny Williams to appeal to American audiences, which he declined to do. DiCaprio remained jobless for a year and a half, even after 100 auditions. Following this lack of success, DiCaprio made a decision to give up on his acting career but his father persuaded him to persevere with it. Motivated by his father and the need to financially support his mother, he continued to audition, after a talent agent, who knew his mother's friend, recommended him to casting directors, DiCaprio secured roles in about 20 commercials. 28. DiCaprio was represented by popular headshot photographer and manager Bob Villar during this time. By the early 1990s, he began acting regularly on television, starting with a role in the pilot of The Outsiders, 1990, and one episode of the soap opera Santa Barbara, 1990, in which he played the young Mason Capwell. DiCaprio's career prospects improved when he was cast in Parenthood, a series based on the 1989 comedy film of the same name. To prepare for the role of Gary Buckman, a troubled teenager, he analyzed Joaquin Phoenix's performance in the original film. His work that year earned him two nominations at the 12th Youth in Film Awards, Best Young Actor in a Daytime Series for Santa Barbara and Best Young Actor Starring in a New Television Series for Parenthood. Around this time, he was a contestant on the children's game show Fun House, on which he performed several stunts, including catching the fish inside a small pool using only his teeth. Career 1991-1996, Early Work and Breakthrough DiCaprio made his film debut later that year as the stepson of an unscrupulous landlord in the low-budget horror Critters 3, 1991, a role he later described as your average, no-depth, standard kid with blonde hair. DiCaprio has stated that he prefers not to remember Critters 3, describing it as possibly one of the worst films of all time DiCaprio has stated that he prefers not to remember Critters 3, describing it as and citing it as the kind of role he wanted to ignore in the future. Later in 1991, he became a recurring cast member of the sitcom Growing Pains, playing Luke Brower, a homeless boy who was taken in by a family. Co-star Joanna Kearns recalls DiCaprio being especially intelligent and disarming for his age but she said that he was also mischievous and jocular on set and often made fun of his co-stars. DiCaprio was cast by the producers to appeal to young female audiences but his arrival did not improve the show's ratings and he left before the end of its run, attributing his departure to bad writing. He was nominated for a Young Artist Award for Best Young Actor co-starring in a television series. Also that year, DiCaprio played an uncredited role in one episode of Roseanne. In 1992, DiCaprio played a brief role in the first installment of the Poison Ivy film series, and later in the year Robert De Niro handpicked DiCaprio from a short list of 400 young actors to co-star with him in This Boy's Life. The film is a biopic on the relationship between the rebellious teenager Tobias Toby Wolf, DiCaprio, and his mother, Ellen Barkin, and abusive stepfather, De Niro. Its director Michael Catton Jones later said that DiCaprio did not know how to behave on set, leading Catton Jones to apply a strict mentoring style, after which DiCaprio's behavior began to improve. Bill Jabiri of Rolling Stone found that the powerful bond between Barkin and DiCaprio elevated the film, praising DiCaprio's portrayal of the character's complex growth from a rebellious teenager to an independent young man. DiCaprio played the intellectually disabled brother of Johnny Depp's character in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, 1993, a comic tragic odyssey of a dysfunctional Iowa family. 
According to director Lasse Hallström, Catan Jones recommended DiCaprio to him, but he was initially skeptical, as he considered DiCaprio too good-looking for the part. Hallström cast DiCaprio after he emerged as the most observant auditionee. The film became a critical success. At 19, DiCaprio earned a National Board of Review Award, as well as nominations for a Golden Globe Award and an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, making him the seventh youngest Oscar nominee in the category. The film's real show-stopping turn comes from Mr. DiCaprio, wrote the New York Times critic Janet Maslin, who makes Arnie's many ticks so startling and vivid that at first he is difficult to watch. The performance has a sharp, desperate intensity from beginning to end. Some text goes here Karen James, also writing for the New York Times, said of his performances in This Boy's Life and Once Eating Gilbert Grape, he made the raw, emotional neediness of those boys completely natural and powerful. DiCaprio's first effort of 1995 was in Sam Raimi's western film The Quick and the Dead, but Sony Pictures was dubious over DiCaprio's casting, and as a result, co-star Sharon Stone paid his salary herself. The film was released to a dismal box office performance and mixed reviews from critics. DiCaprio's next film in 1995 was The Basketball Diaries, a biopic, in which he played a teenage Jim Carroll as a drug-addicted high school basketball player and writer. DiCaprio next starred alongside David Thewlis and Agnieszka Koholland's erotic trauma Total Eclipse, a fictionalized account of the homosexual relationship between Arthur Rambeau, DiCaprio, and Paul Verlaine, Thewlis. He replaced River Phoenix, who died before filming began. Although the film failed commercially, it has been included in the catalog of Warner Archive Collection, a home video division for releasing classic and cult films from Warner Brothers Library. DiCaprio starred opposite Clara Danes in Baz Luhrmann's film Romeo Plus Juliet, 1996, an abridged modernization of William Shakespeare's romantic tragedy of the same name, which retained the original Shakespearean dialogue. The project grossed $147 million worldwide, and earned DiCaprio a silver bear for Best Actor at the 1997 Berlin International Film Festival. Reviewing his early works, David Thompson of The Guardian called DiCaprio a revelation in What's Eating Gilbert Grape very moving in this boy's life, suitably desperate in the basketball diaries and a vital spark in Romeo plus Juliet. Later in 1996, DiCaprio starred in Marvin's Room, a family drama about two estranged sisters, played by Meryl Streep and Diane Keaton, who were reunited through tragedy. DiCaprio portrayed Hank, the troubled son of Streep's character, who has been committed to a mental asylum. Lisa Schwartzbaum of Entertainment Weekly praised the deeply gifted DiCaprio for holding his own against the experienced actresses Keaton and Streep, describing the three as full-bodied and so powerfully affecting that you're carried along on the pleasure of being in the presence of their extraordinary talent. 1997-2001, Titanic and Worldwide Recognition DiCaprio rejected a role in the film Boogie Nights, 1997, to star opposite Kate Winslet in James Cameron's Titanic. 1997, as members of different social classes who fall in love aboard RMS Titanic during its ill-fated maiden voyage. DiCaprio initially had doubts about it, but was eventually encouraged to pursue the part by Cameron. With a production budget of more than $200 million, the film was the most expensive at the time and was shot at Rosarito, Baja California where a replica of the ship was created. Titanic became the highest grossing film at the time eventually earning more than $2. 1 billion in box office receipts worldwide. The role of Jack Dawson transformed DiCaprio into a superstar, resulting in intense adoration among teenage girls and young women in general that became known as Leo Mania, comparable to Beatlemania in the 1960s. The film won 11 Academy Awards, the most for any film, including Best Picture, but DiCaprio's failure to gain a nomination led to a protest against the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences AMPAS, by more than 200 fans. He was nominated for other high-profile awards, including a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor. DiCaprio stated in 2000, I have no connection with me during that whole Titanic phenomenon and what my face became around the world I'll never reach that state of popularity again, and I don't expect to. It's not something I'm going to try to achieve either. 70. In 2015, Iberi called the role DiCaprio's best, writing that he and Winslet infuse their earnest back and forth with so much genuine emotion that it's hard not to get swept up in their doomed love affair. 
a journalist for Vanity Fair similarly labeled them in 2008 Hollywood's most iconic screen couple since Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. Reviewing the film in 2017, Alyssa Wilkinson of Vox took note of DiCaprio's boyish charm and found him natural and unaffected in his performance. After the success of Titanic, DiCaprio reduced his workload to learn to hear, his, own voice in choosing the roles that he wanted to pursue. DiCaprio played a role in a brief appearance in Woody Allen's caustic satire of the fame industry, Celebrity, 1998, whom Ibiri labeled the best thing in the film. That year, he also starred in the dual roles of the villainous King Louis XIV and his secret, sympathetic twin brother Philippe and Randall Wallace's The Man in the Iron Mask, based on the namesake 1939 film. The film received mixed to negative response, but grossed $180 million against its budget of $35 million. Entertainment Weekly critic Cohen Gleiberman wrote that DiCaprio did not look old enough to play the part, but praised him as a fluid and instinctive actor, with the face of a mischievous angel. The Guardian's Alex von Tunzelman was similarly impressed with his performance but found his talent wasted in the film. Nevertheless, DiCaprio was awarded a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Screen Couple for both incarnations the following year. In 1998, DiCaprio was cast in American Psycho, 2000, for a reported salary of $20 million. After disagreements with Oliver Stone on the film's direction, DiCaprio left the project, taking the lead role in The Beach instead. The latter, an adaption of Alex Garland's 1996 novel of the same name, saw him play an American backpacking tourist looking for the perfect way of life in a secret island commune in the Gulf of Thailand. Budgeted at $50 million, the film earned about three times more at the box office, but was negatively reviewed by critics, and earned him a nomination for the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actor. Todd McCarthy of Variety thought DiCaprio gave a compelling performance but his character lacked the uniqueness to make him dimensional. In the mid-1990s, DiCaprio appeared in the mostly improvised black-and-white short film Don's Plum as a favor to aspiring director R.D. Robb. When Robb expanded it to a full-length feature, DiCaprio and co-star Tobey Maguire had its release blocked in the U.S. and Canada by court order, arguing they never intended to make it a theatrical release. The film premiered at the 2001 Berlin International Film Festival. 2002-2009, Venture into Film Production DiCaprio turned down the role of Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, 2002. His first film that year was the biopic Catch Me If You Can, based on the life of Frank Abagnale Jr., who before his 19th birthday committed check fraud to make millions in the 1960s. Directed by Steven Spielberg, the film was shot across 147 different locations in 52 days, making it the most adventurous supercharged movie making DiCaprio had experienced yet. The film received critical acclaim and with a worldwide gross of $351 million against a budget of $52 million, it became his second highest grossing release after Titanic. Roger Ebert praised his departure from dark and troubled characters, while two Entertainment Weekly critics in 2018 called it DiCaprio's best role, labeling him delightfully persuasive, deceptive, flirtatious, and sometimes tragic, and we dare you to find a better role, if you can. DiCaprio received his third Golden Globe nomination for his performance in the film. Also in 2002, DiCaprio starred in Martin Scorsese's Gangs of New York, a historical drama set in the mid-19th century in the Five Points district of New York City. Scorsese initially struggled selling his idea of realizing the film until DiCaprio became interested in playing protagonist Amsterdam Vallon a young leader of an Irish-American street gang, and thus Miramax Films got involved with financing the project. Nonetheless, production on the film was plagued by overshooting of budgets and producer-director disagreements, resulting in an eight-month shoot. With a budget of $103 million, the film was the most expensive Scorsese had ever made. Gangs of New York earned $193 million worldwide and received positive critical response. Ann Thompson of The Observer took note of DiCaprio's low-key, sturdy performance, but felt that co-star Daniel Day-Lewis overshadowed him. In 2004, DiCaprio founded the production company Appian Way Productions, a namesake of the Italian road. He was interested in finding out-of-the-box material from an actor's perspective and developing it in a way it stayed true to its original source. He said, a lot of times, I'd gone through the process of getting a great book or finding a great story and then too many people get their hands on it and it turns into something entirely different. 
it is very difficult to reverse that process. DiCaprio's first producing task was in The Assassination of Richard Nixon, starring Sean Penn as Samuel Bick, which was screened in the UN Certain Regards section at the 2004 Cannes Film Festival. DiCaprio and Scorsese reunited for a biopic of Howard Hughes, an American film director and aviation pioneer suffering from obsessive-compulsive disorder, in The Aviator, 2004, which DiCaprio also co-produced under Appian Way. DiCaprio initially developed the project with Michael Mann, who decided against directing it after working on biopics The Insider, 1999, and Ali, 2001. DiCaprio eventually pitched John Logan's script to Scorsese, who quickly signed on to direct. The Aviator became a critical and financial success, grossing $213 million against its budget of $110 million. Simon Brown of Empire praised DiCaprio for convincingly playing a complex role, highlighting the scenes depicting Hugh's paranoia and obsession. He received his first Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Drama and nominations for an Academy Award, a BAFTA Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actor. In 2006, DiCaprio starred in the crime film The Departed and the political war thriller Blood Diamond. In Scorsese's The Departed, DiCaprio played the role of Billy Costigan, a state trooper working undercover in the Irish mob in Boston, someone he characterizes as in a constant, 24-hour panic attack. This reunited DiCaprio with prior colleagues, Mark Wahlberg after The Basketball Diaries, and Catch Me If You Can co-star Martin Sheen. DiCaprio especially liked the experience of working with co-star Jack Nicholson, describing a scene with him as one of the most memorable moments of his life as an actor. In preparation, DiCaprio visited Boston to interact with people associated with the Irish mob and gained 15 pounds kilograms, of muscle. Critically acclaimed, the film grossed $291 million against a budget of $90 million, becoming DiCaprio and Scorsese's highest grossing collaboration to that point. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone praised DiCaprio's and co-star Matt Damon's performances, but felt that Nicholson overshadowed the two. Despite DiCaprio's leading role in The Departed, the film's distributor Warner Brothers Pictures submitted his performance for a Best Supporting Actor nomination at the Ampus to avoid internal conflict with his part in Blood Diamond. Instead, his co-star Mark Wahlberg was nominated, though DiCaprio earned other accolades for The Departed, including a Satellite Award for Best Supporting Actor and nominations for Best Actor at the Golden Globes and BAFTA Awards. In Blood Diamond, DiCaprio starred as a diamond smuggler from Rhodesia who was involved in the Sierra Leone Civil War. While filming, he worked with 24 orphan children from the SOS Children's Village in Maputo, Mozambique, and said he was touched by his interactions with them. To prepare, he spent six months in Africa, learned about camouflage from people in South African military and interviewed and recorded people in the country to improve his accent. The film received generally favorable reviews, and DiCaprio was noted for his South African accent, which is generally known as difficult to imitate. Claudia Puig of the USA Today approvingly highlighted DiCaprio's transition from a boy to a man on screen, and Anne Hornaday of the Washington Post similarly noted his growth as an actor since The Departed. DiCaprio received nominations for an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for Blood Diamond. In 2007, DiCaprio produced the comedy drama Gardener of Eden, which according to The Hollywood Reporter's Frank Sheck lacked the necessary dramatic urgency or black humor to connect with audiences some text goes here. DiCaprio was also a creator and an executive producer for Planet Green's Greensburg, 2008-2010, which ran for three seasons. Set in Greensburg, Kansas, it is about rebuilding the town in a sustainable way after being hit by the May 2007 EF5 tornado. Also in 2008, DiCaprio starred in Body of Lies, a spy film based on the novel of the same name. He played one of three agents battling a terrorist organization in the Middle East. DiCaprio dyed his hair brown and wore brown contacts for his role in the film, which he considered a throwback to political films of the 1970s like The Parallax View, 1974, and Three Days of the Condor, 1975. The film received mixed reviews from critics, and grossed $118 million against a budget of $67.5 million. Later in 2008, DiCaprio collaborated with Kate Winslet for the drama Revolutionary Road, directed by her then-husband Sam Mendes. As both actors had been reluctant to make romantic films similar to Titanic, it was Winslet who suggested that they both work with her on a film adaptation of the 1961 eponymous novel by Richard Yates.
As she had read the script by Justin Haitha, she found that the plot had little in common with the 1997 blockbuster. Playing a couple in a failing marriage in the 1950s, DiCaprio and Winslet spent some time together in preparation, and DiCaprio felt claustrophobic on the small set they used. He saw his character as unheroic, slightly cowardly and someone willing to be just a product of his environment. Peter Travers was impressed with DiCaprio's pairing with Winslet and with his multi-layered portrayal of an overwhelmed character, while Marshall Sello of GQ called it the most mature and memorable performance of his lifetime. DiCaprio earned his seventh Golden Globes nomination for the film. Revolutionary Road grossed $75. 9 million against its budget of $35 million. He ended the 2000s by producing director Jal McLeaser's psychological horror thriller film Orphan, 2009, starring Vera Farmiga, his co-star The Departed, Peter Sarsgaard and Isabel Furman. Although the film received mixed reviews, it was a commercial success.